Meet Denise, a native New Yorker who has lived in her current co-op apartment for the last 29 years. Her residence is located in a pre-war loft building in the heart of Gramercy. Denise invited Dwellings NYC to come tour her home. And having lived in the same neighborhood and apartment for almost three decades, she has some amazing stories to tell. Stories of unique guests. And then when my friend Gay killed himself, we had his memorial service here, and Kurt Vonnegut came. Crazy visitors. So she comes over, and you know, we're having a perfectly decent time, not great. And all of a sudden, she starts mumbling to herself and talking to God. And the considerable demographic changes in her building. And now, I only have multimillionaires in my building. I'm the poor white trash in the building. Denise's loft is approximately 2,000 square feet. It features a large living room, two bedrooms, two baths, an open kitchen with a dining area, and an oversized bookcase. So my favorite thing about this apartment when we moved in was the bookcase with the rolling ladder, and you can see why. And now it's become my biggest problem, getting rid of about 1,000 books. Today, the loft is valued over $2 million, and it's surprising to hear how much Denise and her husband at the time paid for the apartment. We paid $385,000, which at the time was quite a bit of money. We paid cash because I knew my husband was so crazy we'd never be able to keep a mortgage going. And the price before that? When the building first went co-op, six years before we bought it, it had sold for $20,000. And before we bought it, somebody owned it who was an alcoholic and hid boxes and things in front of all the, um, uh, like, broken molding and broken mirrors in the bathroom. He would only allow the apartment to be shown two hours a day because it was the only time this apartment had any light. And my ex-husband came at night when I wasn't around and measured in the dining room because all he cared about was a three cushion billiard table which is what he needed so we had to tear down a wall and the well, a, a counter space in the kitchen so his three cushion billiard table would fit in the dining room and that and he measured it and he offered full ask the billiard table eventually left with the husband and was replaced with the dining table and the dining area became denise's favorite part of the apartment so my favorite part of the apartment is my dining table where I live and where I have my friends over. I usually have two or three times a week people come over and hang out and have dinner. 30 years ago, Gramercy was not the prestigious area that it is today. And we asked Denise why she chose the neighborhood. We lived on 27th, 24th and 7th Avenue when my daughter was born. And one night I'm walking down the street on 23rd Street and there are these two guys walking down the street. One of them is naked from the waist up and he's got two nipple rings attached to a chain, which was attached to a collar around his boyfriend's neck. He was wearing chaps with no underpants and he had a banana through his earlobe. So I decided that was no place for my child to grow up. So I looked around for a relatively middle-class, stable, neighborhood and this was the best I could do. But sometimes the grass is not always greener on the other side. When I first moved here this was a no man's land. Every night people would break into people's cars and you'd see all this broken glass on the street. There were hookers at four o'clock in the morning in, tr in cars and minivans. You couldn't go to a uh, Union Square Park. They redid a playground in there and I would take my daughter and they would find works in the sandbox. You couldn't walk down Park Avenue South below 17th Street to 14th Street at night. It was incredibly dangerous. This apartment got broken into three times. They came in the back window three times. And now I only have multimillionaires in my building. I'm the poor white trash in the building. Artists can't afford to live here anymore. But you're an artist and I'm you the paint. One of the, I'm the only built person in the building that makes art. When I first moved in, we had several artists. We had singers. We had actors. We had designers. I think there are three families left that have lived here as long as I have. I 
had these three Danish boys staying here. They were friends of my daughter's. And in the morning in their long underwear, they would get up and they would do ballet and jump around my apartment. And they were very cute. But when they started leaving their dental floss on the desk where my computer, their used dental floss on the desk where my computer was, I really had enough. And then I had this young roommate a couple years ago and she had a friend of hers spend the night and these were 21 year old girls that couldn't handle their alcohol and her friend peed on my sofa. That was, I thought that was really beyond, beyond. Oh, and my neighbor used to have her dog shit and piss on the roof. And that was annoying because you'd be up on the roof and your bare feet and you'd step in dog shit. And broken glass wasn't nice either on the roof. Many years ago, this woman that I'd known when I was very young came over and she started to have a schizophrenic episode and I decided to get her out of here. So she said she had to go to the bathroom and she obviously got in the shower with all her clothes on and came out completely wet, her hair soaking. It was cold out, so I couldn't throw her out right away. I was on the verge of calling the police when she left of her own accord. Well, anyway, so somebody had given her my name because we'd gone to high school together and she called me up and I was kind of curious about her. She'd always been incredibly talented. So she comes over and, you know, we're having a perfectly decent time, not great. And all of a sudden she starts mumbling to herself and talking to God. And I could see she was getting violent. So I decided it was time for her to leave. And then she got even more crazy. She didn't want to go. She said she had nowhere to go. So then she went to the bathroom and got in the shower with all her clothes on. How'd you get her out of the apartment? I told her I was going to call the police. So she finally left. I gave her a towel. I gave her some dry clothes. She dried herself off and left. I told her I was going to call the police, and she did not want to go back to the mental institution, which I hadn't realized she'd been in recently. Did you ever see her again? No, I never saw her again. And I don't know what happened to her. Well, I used to be friends with Alger Hiss, the alleged spy, and he used to come over here with his wife. And then when my friend Gay killed himself, we had his memorial service here, and Kurt Vonnegut came. When Denise is not entertaining, she spends her time painting. This is where I do my painting. It's near the windows in the back of the apartment. Um, it's the only space I could carve out for myself, where, which wasn't completely covered with things. And these were the things I was willing to get rid of. It's a little, it's too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. In the summer, well, actually with the air conditioning, it's okay. In the summer, I have to put up fabric on the window because it gets too bright and in the winter it gets so cold that my paints dry up. Well I grew up in New York so it's a love-hate relationship. I think I love the energy. I love the fact that it's like almost like taking speed. You know, because you feed off all the energy in the street, and it gives, it's very creative. Unfortunately, Manhattan is getting to be like a upper middle class theme park. I grew up on the Upper West Side, and when I was a child, it was um, Jews, because Jews weren't allowed to live on the Upper East Side. It was a lot of European refugees. It was a lot of Puerto Ricans, a lot of Dominicans, a lot of Haitians, and a lot of poor white people, which people find very difficult to believe now. I grew up in the West 70s. In the 1970s, Columbus Avenue, which really was a dump up until then, start, all these gay guys moved in. It just changed the whole look of the avenue. There started to be chic stores and chic restaurants, and that's when Manhattan really started to change in the 70s. In the 1980s, the city changed because people started to make money on the stock market. And so it became very glamorous. People that normally, young people that normally would have moved to the suburbs stopped wanting to live in the suburbs. So New York real estate went crazy. All these rich people that would have lived in Bedford, New York, or Greenwich, Connecticut, 
or Garden City decided they wanted to live in the West Village, in Chelsea, in Gramercy, on the Upper East Side, on the Upper West Side. So the real estate went crazy and so the city became very gentrified. So every so landlords realized that they had these cash cows and they started to renovate the apartments and they got rid of everybody. So slowly but surely, all the ethnic groups in New York were pushed out. They were pushed out into Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, the Bronx. And slowly but surely, as people got richer and richer, the poor had to move further and further out of Manhattan. For originally, they had a half an hour commute. Now, it's not unusual for people that are making minimum wage to commute for an hour and a half, two hours. It's evolved tremendously. Now, there's some good things about that. There's very little crime, but there's also very little diversity. Very few artists can live here. Any, a gallery, for instance, pays so much rent that if you can't guarantee them fifty, sixty thousand dollars a show, they can't afford to show you. Whereas galleries used to be able to take chances on young artists, they can't afford it anymore. With the high cost of living, escalating taxes, and the gentrification of New York City, Denise is concerned that she will one day soon be priced out of her neighborhood. Neighboring buildings include 50 Gramercy Park North, where apartments sell for over $3,000 per square foot, and the latest development at 18 Gramercy Park South, where apartments average over $4,000 per square foot and have sold between $13 to $42 million. Gentrification generally increases property values and reduces crime, but it also tends to strip neighborhoods of character and displaces people and small businesses. My plans for the future are really contingent on how much the maintenance in this building goes up. I uh, have a big garden on the roof, which is the love of my life, and every, nobody in the building will help. They refuse to help, even though they all use it. And I love my, I love my garden, and I'm going to try and stay here until I can't afford the maintenance anymore. My daughter owns half the apartment, and she would love it if I'd sell, because she'd love to buy a little apartment in Brooklyn. But um, I'm really loath to move. I've been here for the longest I've ever been anywhere in my life. And I'd like to stay here until I die, and hopefully I'll be able to.